Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Futures Brizio here. It is 5.20 p.m. on Tuesday, June 25th. Hope everyone had a fantastical day and good week so far. Um, so the purpose of this video, guys, just a, a quick demonstration or a comparison, I guess, of the Heikinashi Smooth versus regular Heikinashi candles. And, uh, and we'll just talk about a couple of quick things in terms of market structure. Uh, I just have like one example where you could easily get faked out on something, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, so first thing here, uh, before we get started, make sure you smash that like button, please. That really helps the YouTube algorithm. And then uh, if you're just finding the channel, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell notification when I make new videos, which is one or two times a week. Again, I don't sell anything on this channel, never have, never will. So uh, there's nothing down in the description to buy a course or signals or anything like that, okay? So take that for what it's worth. All right, so I've made uh, several videos recently uh, talking about the Heikinashi Smooth Indicator. And so what you see on the screen on the left, you see regular Heikinashi candles. And you, on the right, you see the Heikinashi Smooth Indicator uh, set to a period of three, okay? So not to rehash it, the Heikinashi Smooth is essentially Heikinashi candles overlaid on a moving average, okay? So you can see they look very close, all right? Now, on the Heikinashi one on the left, you cannot adjust that. That's a preset formula of how Heikinashi candles are formed. I'm not going to review that. They, they basically take the average of the last couple of candles. One candle starts in the middle of the previous one. You can go back if you're not familiar with Heikinashi candles. The purpose of it is to try to smooth out the chart versus regular candlesticks and you know show you a little bit more smoothing okay but you can't adjust any settings on the Heikinashi on the left okay that's a preset formula indicator that's it okay now on the right the Heikinashi smooth is adjustable you can pick the period you can pick the type of moving average you know what it calls the smoothing period which is just like if you were putting any moving average on your chart so you wanted to do a 10 period exponential okay well in this case uh, I have it set to linear weighted, which is just another type of moving average. Um, it's generally even more responsive to recent price action than even an exponential. But it's a linear weighted, and I set it to a period of three. So again, not to rehash, but if I right now put a three period, a regular three period linear weighted moving average on this chart on the right, you would not be able to see the difference. It would completely follow to the T the center of all these candles because that's essentially what it is. It's a three period linear weighted moving average with Heikinashi candles overlaid on top of it. Now, because I have it set to a period of three, it's very, very close to the regular Heikinashi chart on the left because it's only basically averaging out the last three candles, whereas essentially a regular Heikinashi chart is averaging out, you know, basically the last two. So they're very close, but this is subtle differences. And I would say if you use the Heikinashi Smooth, especially for day trading and scalping, you need to use a low setting. I would recommend, you know, a period of three, five, maybe seven. But I have it set to three, and so that's what it is. So um, I can show you that just fairly quick. Get this on the main screen. Okay, so there it is, Heikinashi Smooth. I open the settings, and again, I have to move it to the main screen. And there you go, okay? Okay, actually, I lied. This one's set to period five, linear weighted, okay? So these are what you can adjust on this chart, okay? Whereas you can't adjust a regular Heikinashi indicator, all right? Uh, there is some other thing here called better formula, true or false. Uh, if you set it to true or false, it slightly changes anything. I just put it on true. It really doesn't matter. If you see the difference, it's very, very minor, so these are the two main things okay so get rid of that all right so now let's just look at these two charts so this is the five minute chart of gold and uh, we're basically looking from about 7 a.m this morning to where we are now the markets uh in uh is closed at the moment for a changeover so all right so one area i want to kind of focus on is this area right in here all right, so let's do that on the smooth chart, on the regular Heikinashi chart. 
right it's right here it's the same price area now let's talk about this chart okay so we were clearly in a downtrend coming out of the the early part of the session came down here put in this low came back up put in a new low came back up eventually kept going down so two things one let's look at market structure so and you can see that um, you can see that uh, let me see I want to put these candlesticks on right here okay so let's talk about first let's talk about the regular Heikinashi chart so we had this low put in price came up retraced and then we had this bearish Heikinashi candle right here so you may have thought, oh, that's the end of the correction. I'm going to go short right here. So you go short. It goes down a tiny little bit, and then it wicks up and goes all the way back up. Probably stops you out because you probably had your stop maybe up here. Okay, so you probably get stopped out on this wick right here, depending where you had your stop loss. But at the very least, you went into some pretty good drawdown. Then eventually it went back down. Okay, and you also had some relatively strong bullish Heikinashi candles forming here on this uptrend basically from here you know not super strong <clears throat> but it's pretty strong so maybe you would have even thought that this thing's going to start going up and you went long and then you certainly got stopped out on that okay so and that's the way these Heikinashi candles are drawing now if we just take a look at market structure hopefully you didn't um you, you know, you didn't at least take a long position because if you look uh, at what this is doing, we had this level right here. Okay, we had this previous high before this low. And you can see the price did go up and wick through it, but it came right back down. So we never had a breach of this level up here. All right, and it certainly didn't breach this level up here. But even we just take this one. So hopefully you didn't go long anyways. But if you did... If you went short, because the Heikinashi candle painted a big bearish candle right here, that probably would have been a losing trade as well, or at least into drawdown, depending where you had your stop loss. But if you flip over here and you look at that same area uh, on the um, smooth indicator, well, you notice a couple of things. First of all, look at the, after this low was put in, and then price started going back up. Look at all of these candles right here. These two blue ones, these pink ones, or purple, and then all these blue ones going up, with the exception of maybe this very last one right here. What do you notice about all these candles versus over here? What do you notice? Well, you notice that all of these wicks, there's big wicks on both sides of all of these candles. What does that tell you? Well, in the Heikinashi Smooth world, it generally tells you weak price action. Right? There's just not a lot of momentum because Heikinashi candles, when there's strong price action on a bear candle, you'll get a flat top. You'll get a candle, a bear candle with no wick on the top. And in bullish price action, you will get a strong, you'll get no wick on the bottom. It's, you will always have wicks on the bottom on a bear candle and on the top on a bull candle. But when you see wicks on both sides of the candle, that especially when they're the bigger they are, that generally tells you that you have weak price action. So if you had seen this, be like, well, look at all these. This is definitely corrective for two reasons. One, you had all these wicks showing you weak price action. Unlike over here, where maybe this bear candle would have fooled you into going short or this one. And then maybe even going long over here. Well, you never had that here. And second of all, of course, we never breached this, this um, structure area right here. You see price came up. I guess you can say it kind of breached it right here, but it closed back inside of it right here on this this bull candle. But we never there was no follow through. It immediately came back and then sold off. All right, so they you know they ran the price back into this liquidity area, swept the liquidity up here where the stop losses were, sitting right above here, and then pushed it down again. So I just wanted to show you. This is why I like the Heikinashi smooth. It's not perfect. It's going to be sometimes when a bullish, excuse me, when a strong trend starts in one direction and the first few candles may be double wick because sometimes it takes it takes a while to get going, especially on a reversal. If you think about it, 
if price had been going down and it's truly about to reverse, right? Well, there's still a lot of sellers fighting that trend, right? Fighting that reversal. So at first you might have a lot of wicks because prices, there's a push and pull between the buyers and the sellers. It kind of splits the difference and you tend to have these weak candles, okay? But eventually, you know, if the trend is strong, it's going to kick in into one direction and then so be it. So it's not perfect, but you can see in this case, this was definitely made this more clear to me that over here, this is, you know, I didn't want to take this long and it was not a good place to go short right here with these big wicks. You look at where price finally did turn. Well, you had this little, uh, this little doji purple candle right here. You had this little purple doji right here. You could have just gone short right here because now you were back to a pre previous liquidity area. This would have been a really safe area to go short, put your stop up here, give it a little breathing room in case it spiked one more time. Uh, but if not, then certainly the next one, you can see the next bear candle painted with no wick on the top, so indicating strong price action, and then price went down. But you know your best risk to reward ratio was this little spinning top right here because we were also, again, sitting at a liquidity level at a previous swing high, whatever you want to call this. And there you go. Price went down, made a new low. Okay? So I want to just kind of point that out. And this is why I prefer Heikenashi Smooth over Heikenashi Regular. Although the regular Heikenashi candles are fine too. I'm just going to switch this to the three period linear weighted. And just to look at the difference. So let's look at this now. So now this is the three period. And this is the reason why I like to use the five period because now you can see on the three period, we still have a lot of wicks in here. So still, I probably would not have taken this sh short from here because we still have wicks on both sides of this, uh, on both sides of this bear candle. We still have wicks, right? And even on the next one, but the bodies are definitely bigger and the wicks are not as obvious. And then again, we had wicks all the way up to the top again before here. But on the five period, it was much more obvious, right? The wicks were very noticeable. You saw the difference on the wicks on the five period, right? Right here. Look, look at the difference in the wicks, okay? So that's what I mean. You can use three periods, five periods. It's going to be a little bit of difference. But obviously, the, um, the five period is uh, going to take more of an average. Uh, and so, you know, it, it's not going to be as noisy, but in this case, you really want that noise. Uh, excuse me, the three period. The three period is going to be much shorter that it's looking at. So as price starts to go up, it's taking more of that recent price action into account, and it's going to have smaller wicks because price is trying to pull back up. If you're using the five period, it's looking back a little further to say, well, you know, there's, there's still a lot of downward momentum here. And so that, that's the difference, Okay. So again, you can use a three period or five period, pick and choose. You may have to play around with it depending on the asset. All right, but again, the point is just showing you the difference between regular Heikenashi and Heikenashi Smooth, okay? And again, I just use the Heikenashi Smooth as my, as my chart, even though this is just an indicator. Well, all the Heikenashi is is just an indicator too. Now, like I said before, guys, you cannot completely discount the candlesticks. So if I want to look at what the candlesticks are doing, I just go up here, turn on my candlesticks, and now I can see. And this is how I know that we're not breaching levels because see these green? These are the actual underlying candlesticks. So when price came back up here, all right, and I see this, I see this wick right here, and price wicks and comes back, I know that this is not a reversal to the upside. Price spike, took out the liquidity, stop loss order sitting here. And then it did chop around a little bit more. It never came back to that area and then finally fell off. So I still turn on the candlesticks because I use them for stop loss areas. I use them for take profit zones. And I use them just to kind of verify structure levels when I'm thinking about getting into a trade, especially when it comes back up into liquidity. Because remember, Heikenashi candlesticks, whether you're looking at the smooth or the regular Heikenashi, does not show you the actual underlying price you're not actually seeing the true candlestick price, okay? So, you know, you can just easily switch on the candlesticks and MetaTrader and just take a quick look. Okay, great. Yep, I'm going to go short right here. I'm going to put my stop above this swing where this wick was, and I'm good to go, okay? And then I just turn the candlesticks off because, again, you lose that view when you turn them off. 
because again it's just the way Heiken Ashis are are calculated plus when you're using it as a moving average that's going to slow it down even more because a moving average is by nature is lagging so that slows it down even more so it never really catches up with that wick all right so that's the difference guys between Heiken Ashi and Heiken Ashi smooth they're both good I just prefer the smooth because of this it's a little bit more telling about impulsive versus corrective price action it's a little bit easier to see the difference okay it's not guaranteed because again like I said sometimes when a reversal starts you will have a lot of wicks at the very very beginning of that reversal and then eventually it straightens out but here since we never breached this this previous swing high none of that mattered I wasn't looking for a long anyways because we never decisively broke through here if we had broke through here closed above then I maybe would start looking for longs maybe a little retest and go or if you want to be really aggressive you can just go long right on the, the a definitive break of this liquidity area here okay but we never got that so irregardless this would not have been an area to go long and to go short we want to wait until we come back near the liquidity zone and we don't get these these candles with giant wicks on both sides this little spinning top right here is perfectly fine it's got a tiny tiny little body it's a nice little doji candle okay and it's just showing you a shift and then the very next candle we get a flat top so whether you wanted to take this one or this one uh, on the close would have been perfectly fine okay uh, this one would have given you a slightly better risk to reward ratio than this one but either way is fine okay put your stop above that wick that we saw with when we turned on the candlesticks okay i put my stop above here not here and then just let it go and if you're wrong you're wrong it's a quick stop out it's a low risk trade okay all right so the last thing i want to show you so that's gold is copper let me bring up these two copper charts all right so we talked about market structure and swing high versus uh, swing lows and talking about reversals. Well, copper was following a super, super clear downtrend today. But at a couple of points today, we put in higher lows. So let's look at this area right here. All right. Well, actually, we'll stretch this over. So we're coming down, put in this low, retrace, came down, put in a higher low, right? This low is higher than this one, right? So you're like, oh, and then you can see... We had one bear bull candle with a bottom wick, so we wouldn't have taken that. But the very next one came back with a flat bottom wick and a pretty good sized body. So you're like, oh, there's a reversal, right? Higher low, bullish candle, reversal. This thing's going higher. You jump in, you buy right here, you put your stop here. Well, you see what happened. You would have been stopped out. Why? Well, we never breached the swing high, okay? So for this... The swing high, the proper swing high is actually over here. It's not even, I mean, we never we never breached this one either. But the actual swing high is over here. Because we had this swing high, that's what led to this new low down here. So this is the swing. So until price comes out and breaches this and then tries to go higher, I'm still holding on to a, a bearish bias on this. If we turn the candlesticks on briefly, you can see again, we never even came back to this high, so let alone, but irregardless even if it did come up to here even if it broke through this one and came up to here i still wouldn't have been looking for a long because the actual swing high was this swing that led to this low down here because this is the most recent low this was a failed low and it all it basically told you is that the market wasn't ready to resume the downtrend yet it certainly did not point to a reversal okay and we had the same thing happen again right here the next we put in this low, price came back, retraced, started to go lower again. Guess what? Sw higher low. All right. It tried to go up, not as bold as this one, but we did get a flat bottom bull candle right here. Price just kind of petered up here, rolled over again. As soon as you get this first red candle, this is your short. Now, even if you went short right here, if you had put your stop up here, you would have just, you know, basically rode this out and you still would have made had a good trade. So even if you went short right here, and the same thing here, you know, price did retrace right here. If you took your short right here, okay, you said, well, you know, you took your short right here. Fine, your stop would have been here. You would have rode out a, a, maybe a tiny bit of drawdown or break even. Price did go down finally, okay? But in order to not be scared out of this trade, you'd say, okay, well, 
it never came and took out the swing high. So even though it maybe brought you back to your entry price or maybe a small drawdown, it never took out the liquidity zone up here. And so this is nothing but a pullback and then, you know, it kept going down. So I wanted to just kind of point out that just because you see, although I love reversal trades, I really do, because they can be really great. You know, if all of a sudden the wind of the market changes in the middle of the session, maybe there's some news or maybe, you know, it's usually news driven. Doesn't if it's if it's trending really strong in one direction, unless there's something to really change it, it's not going to change for the day. It's going to keep going in that direction. But, you know, if something blows into the market and all of a sudden, you know, it reverses. Well, those are great trades. So if all of a sudden this rammed up here, took out this liquidity, maybe pulled back a little bit right here. This would have been a great area to go long. And you had a lot of room to the top side to go. But that didn't happen. The market was kind of just like a, you know, a aircraft carrier floating through the sea, right? You can't just stop it on a dime. It just keeps moving on, right? And so that's what happened here. So I just wanted to point out that just because you see a higher low in the case of a downtrend or a lower high in case of an uptrend does not mean you're going to reverse. You have to let it play out. And this is a five minute chart. If it's gonna really reverse, you're going to see very impulsive action in the opposite direction. And it will break through these levels very easily. All right, but you have to be patient, sit on your hands. And if you're already in a trade here short, I wouldn't get out of it. I would just hold on to it, make sure my stop was in a good place above the most recent swing. I'd want my stop up here. Let this thing come up, even if it comes up here. As long as you have your stop in a good place above the candlestick wick here, you still would have been fine, okay? You would have gone into a little drawdown, but ultimately it still would have been a good trade, all right? And if you didn't get in initially right here, then the next entry would have been right here on this little uh, doji candle right here, and you still could have rode this all the way down the rest of the day, okay? So again, key point, guys, just because you see a higher low in a downtrend or a lower high in the case of an uptrend, you got to wait for the market structure to prove itself out. And if it's been trending very cleanly the way this did, it's very easy to see where those levels are. In the case of the downtrend, where was the last swing high before the last low was put in? Okay, well, that was right here. Okay, and that's the area I'd be looking for for it to breach. Other than this, other than that, none of this is a long entry. This is all short entry. This is actually would have been a great place to add to your trade if you had already gotten in here. At the very least, this could have been another area to enter if you initially missed out on this one. Or if you got scared and you closed this out, well, you had another entry point right here, which wasn't too far off of the original one. So, all right. So I just wanted to point that out. But again, guys, the Heikinashi candles make this really, really easy to see. Okay, it makes it really easy to see. <clears throat> if I just put regular candlesticks on here, which I haven't done, but let me just throw regular candlesticks on here. Uh, here's that area with regular candlesticks, all right? And it's not quite so easy to see, right? You got really bullish candles. Yes, you can still see those structure levels, but you see bullish candles, not as clear. To me, the Heikinashi Smooth is just much easier for me to look at on my eyes. I just like this much better. I don't think you can deny that that looks really clean. But again, you don't want to ignore the candlesticks altogether. You need to be able to uh, look at them to set entry uh, to really be sure about structure levels, take profit levels, stop loss areas, etc., etc. But then I, I do that, I determine those levels, and then I shut them off and go back to just looking at the Heikinashi candles. And that's what I'm looking at for as long as I'm in the trade. So, all right. So, anyways, guys, I will leave it there. I hope that was helpful. Again, smash that like button. Any questions, comments, leave them down below. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you're just finding it for the first time. And uh, that's it. Have a great night, everybody. And we'll talk to you in the next video.